Hey everybody, welcome to my new video series, How I Built the Craziest Gym Ever. This series will include several episodes carefully explaining each piece of equipment I've built in my home gym. I'll be sure to cover things like a list of materials used for each machine, a basic cut list, the dimensions of each machine, and general instruction on how to assemble each piece of equipment. I'll also be adding what tools were used, how much time and cost, as well as discussing future gym equipment projects. If you enjoy this video and want to support future content, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below. So without further delay, let's get to this episode's project. What's up everyone? Back with episode 7, and this time we're going to go over how to build your own wrist roller. This machine is specifically designed for arm wrestlers, or anyone wishing to build and strengthen the muscles around the wrist and forearms. It provides full isolation of the wrist, allowing for both complete and partial range of motion, all while being relatively comfortable so you're able to lift as heavy as possible. Here are the steps needed to build this wrist roller machine. Step 1. Gather materials. For this project you will need one 8 foot 2x4, one 7 inch by 5 inch piece of plywood, and one 9 inch 2x6 scrap wood you can usually find around the house or at the scrap wood pile at Home Depot. A few notes to quickly go over. You will need a total of 98 inches of 2x4 wood for this project as it's shown to you in this video. A standard 8 foot 2x4 is 96 inches. So I would suggest simply searching through the scrap wood pile and adding an extra 2x4 if possible. For the hardware, you will need one box of 2 and 1 half inch screws, a handful of 2 inch screws, one 8 inch by 1 half inch plumber's pipe, two 1 half inch floor flanges, two 6 inch by 1 and 1 half inch plumber's pipe, two 1 and 1 half inch floor flanges, two 1 half inch pillow blocks, two 4 inch by 1 half inch hex bolts and nuts, and four 4 and 1 half inch by 3 8 inch carriage bolts and nuts. The tools needed for this project are one power drill and standard bit for pre-drilling, one 1 half inch spade bit, one 1 quarter inch spade bit, a staple gun, measuring tools, a saw of any kind, I personally use a miter saw, and of course, sanding equipment. You may also need a small amount of vinyl or leather fabric and some one inch foam for the resting pad. Step two, complete cut list. Starting with the eight foot two by four first, make the following cuts. Four cuts of eight inches, two cuts of 10 inches, two cuts of 11 inches, and two cuts of 12 inches. For the 2x6 wood, you will need 2 cuts of 4 and 3 eighths inches. And for the remaining piece of plywood, make sure it measures 7 inches by 5 inches. Also, be sure to cut out an equal size 7 inch by 5 inch pattern from the 1 inch foam to match the piece of plywood. Last, cut out a 9 inch by 7 inch pattern from the vinyl fabric to use for wrapping the foam padding. If finding the right fabric and padding is an issue, then I suggest getting creative and using an old pillow or blanket for the padding and using a handkerchief or maybe a bandana for the fabric. Step 3. Sand and build frame. After you complete the cut list, quickly sand each board to ensure you reach the desired finish. Once sanding is complete, take two of the 8 inch 2x4 boards from the cut list and mark down where to drill the two holes in each board for the bolts that hold the pillow blocks. Be sure to use the pillow blocks as a stencil to mark the holes accurately and then use a 1 quarter inch drill bit to do the drilling. Once all four holes have been drilled, join both 8 inch boards with the two 10 inch boards from the cut list using 2 and 1 half inch screws as shown. Be sure to align the boards so the 8 inch piece leaves a 3 quarter inch overhang as you see here. Next, take the two 11 inch boards from the cut list and lay them on top across the 10 inch boards like so. 
Before joining the boards together, be sure to insert the four carriage bolts into the 8 inch boards as shown. Then use the 2 and 1 half inch screws to join the boards together. Now flip the frame over upside down and grab the two 12 inch boards from the cut list and lay them across the frame. Spread the boards apart so they are flush with the edge of the frame. Pre-drill then join them together using two and a half inch screws. Step 4. Build and install arm pad. Building the arm pad is pretty straightforward. Grab the 5 inch by 7 inch piece of plywood and lay the matching 5 by 7 padding evenly on top. Then simply wrap the fabric around the pad like wrapping a gift and use staples to secure the fabric to the wood. And as you can see, it doesn't have to be pretty. You can use an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors to strip any excess fabric. Once the pad is finished, place it on top of the machine and align it accordingly. Then flip the machine over while holding the pad in place and secure the pad to the machine using the 2 inch screws from the hardware list. Now that the pad is in place, next will be to install both 1 half inch pillow blocks as shown using the 4 carriage bolts and nuts from the hardware list. Remember to tighten everything by hand for now so small adjustments can be made later if necessary. Step 5. Build and install wrist attachment. Take the remaining two 8 inch 2x4 boards and drill a hole 1 half inch down using a 1 half inch spade bit. Next, lie both 8 inch 2x4s on top of the 2x6 boards as shown. Now install both 1 half inch floor flanges on top of the 2x4s using 2 and 1 half inch screws. Again, be sure to pre drill as this will also join the 2x6 and 2x4 together. Grab the 8 inch by 1 half inch plumber's pipe and screw it into the 1 half inch floor flange. Once complete, turn the boards over like so and install both the 1 and 1 half inch floor flanges on top of the 2x6 side of the board using 2 and 1 half inch screws. Lastly, screw in and tighten the 1 and 1 half inch plumber's pipe into the floor flange as tight as possible. Now, attach the arms together by screwing in the other end of the 8 inch plumber's pipe into the opened 1 half inch floor flange. Make sure the pipe is wound as tight as possible. Now finish installing the wrist attachment by sliding the two 4 inch hex bolts into the pillow blocks and through the 1 half inch hole in the 2x4 boards as shown. It's best to tighten the hex bolts by hand to allow for easy adjusting later. Once attached, the swing arm should swing and pivot easily. If not, it may be too tight and need adjusting. Step 6. Make final adjustments. The last step to this project is to simply adjust the machine as necessary so it fits the size of your hand and forearm as comfortably as possible. Small incremental adjustments to the handbar, pillow blocks, or arm pad can be made in order to ensure the machine fits your body's natural range of motion. Once all adjustments are complete, be sure to tighten down all the hardware appropriately. Now for the cost and labor time. The total cost for this machine ranges between $65 and $85 depending on whether or not you want to spend money on the vinyl fabric and foam padding, with the labor time estimated to be around 2 hours. All the materials for this machine can be found at Home Depot, but I suggest buying the pillow blocks from eBay. You have now completed your wrist roller machine. Be sure to tune in as we continue the series, How I Built the Craziest Gym Ever.